Semester number two, lesson number five. Our aim today is how did Thomas Nast's political cartoons help to enlighten the public about the corruption in cities? And a word that you need to know in this aim is the word enlighten. How did Thomas Nast open the eyes of the people to the corruption that was going on right in front of them? All right. And we're going to talk more about that in class, but we're going to see today during your PowerPoint that Nast used cartoons, which is something that, especially at this time and moving forward, is going to be a huge thing in opening the masses' eyes to problems in society. And our do now today says, why do you think artists make political cartoons? What is their purpose? How do you think they are different than regular cartoons? Thomas Nast and political cartoons. Before we get started, I just want to point out that starting today, you will be developing the talking points, and that's going to be part of your grade. For this PowerPoint and moving forward, you will develop the questions that will be discussed in class. Part of your quiz grade every day will be to write down one thoughtful question for classroom discussion. These questions should not be yes or no, but instead allow students to discuss and debate. So, basically what I'm going to start to look for is that you guys carry the conversation, all right? I know you're tired of hearing my voice. I'm tired of hearing my voice. So, from here on out, I want to hear you guys ask the questions. So, just to review, all right, what were cities like during industrialization and urbanization? And if we look at these pictures, all right, at the side here, you have, whenever you see cartoons where someone is uh, fat, usually you're looking at the corrupt, the rich, the people in power, all right? When we're looking at political cartoons, something to keep in mind is fat equals power. And you see these fat men on the right side and these people on the left side, skinny people, that are giving them money and, and, and taxes and all these things. So what were city governments like? They were incredibly corrupt. All right. They accepted bribes. They used violence as a tool to get what they wanted. All right. And if you guys have not had the chance and, you know, you have some extra time over break, you, you might want to consider watching the movie Gangs of New York. You will see corruption left and right in that movie. All right. You have people voting more than once. People voting for people that are dead. All right. There was the accepting of bribes, like we said. The, the politicians were not working for the people, like they should be. They were working to make their own pockets fatter. The word political machines, all right? When we're talking about a political machine, we are talking about a, a political party that basically runs a city, all right? And there was a very famous one in New York City known as Tammany Hall, all right? It was a political machine that controlled all major political offices. And it offered immigrants food, shelter, jobs in exchange for their voting uh, loyalty, all right? Obviously, this is a sign of corruption. I want you to think about, you know, these immigrants coming off the boat. Nothing. And they're offered food. They're offered shelter. They're offered jobs. And all they have to do is make sure that they vote a certain way. And this is how the, the people in power stayed in power. They basically bought the votes, all right? And, you know, imagine that you are a, an immigrant coming off the boat. All you have to do is vote a certain way, and you get food given to you. You get a, a place to live. You get a job, right? All of that is given to you just in exchange for a vote. And the leader of the Tammany machine was a man named Boss Tweed, who we see on the right here, all right? During the time period, you know, the late, the mid to late 1800s, Boss Tweed is running New York City. And he's running it with his political allies and Tammany Hall, the political machine, which basically controls every major political office in New York City. Now, there were those who saw what Tweed was doing and wanted to really call him out on it. And the most notorious of these people was Thomas Nast. Thomas Nast was, was a muckraker who really exposed Boss Tweed for the corrupt politician he was. All right. He showed all the negatives of Tammany Hall and Boss Tweed. And this is one of his hundreds of pictures of um, Boss Tweed and Tammany Hall. And in most of your pictures, you'll see Tweed is very fat. You'll see that there's always money signs and there was money bags or whatever. 
Everything is focused on money and power, and that's what Nass believed Boss Tweed and Tammany Hall was all about. Nass was considered to be the father of American cartoon, and he always depicted Boss Tweed as fat and greedy. And if we look at this picture, all right, that's titled The Brains, all right, it's just uh, it's a picture of Boss Tweed, but instead of his head, he's got a money bag, all right? So here are some more cartoons by Nast of Tweed, all right? In that one on the left, look at him, he looks, you know, very sketchy, all right? Smoking a cigarette, uh, looking just like he's very powerful. Uh, and on the right, you have the ballot, in counting there is strength, all right? That's what's the matter, it says on the bottom. The people that were counting the votes were people who worked for Tammany. So was there any way that Tammany didn't win these elections? And on the right side, I think is even more interesting. All right, you see Tweed, once again, fat. All right, money all around him, showing the greed. And on his head is the capital. All right, what does that symbolize? And we're going to talk about this in class. Maybe that's a good starting point. What does that symbolize, or what does that say? What does that hat symbolize? What does that say about Tweed and his power? All right, we're going to talk about that a little bit. I want you to look at this picture, all right? What do you see? Who do you think this person represents and why? And I want you guys to take this in your direction. What do you see? And remember I said, for pictures like this, maybe break them into fourths, right? Split it down the middle and then split it left to right. Look at quads individually so that you don't miss any parts of the picture. Here are some more cartoons, all right? If you look at the one on the left, uh, on the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, it says, who stole the people's money? All right? And it says, twas him. And it's just people pointing, people pointing, people pointing. And it all lends back to who? Boss Tweed. All right? And then on the right, it says, under the, th the, under the thumb, the boss. Well, what are you going to do about it? All right? He had that kind of power where no one could fight back. And we know this is Tweed because if you look at his shirt, there's the button that says William M. Tweed, and he has all of New York City under his thumb. It shows the kind of power this man had, all right? No one argued with Boss Tweed. And here is another Tammany picture showing, you know, Tammany in terms of a lion or tiger. That's a tiger, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and showing how they rip apart their competition. We'll talk more about this picture all right, as we move on. So our check for understanding today. Cartoons by Nast and books such as Umpton Sinclair's The Jungle, which we talked about yesterday, illustrate how the arts in the United States A, created demands for reform in society, B, were just beginning to reach mass audiences, C, generally centered on themes from nature, or D, still lagged behind European standards? And we will look at this question tomorrow in class, and we will try to figure out what the correct answer is. That is all for tonight.